Number six from the 2006 Higher Maths Paper 1, Area Under a Curve. Part A, for four marks, calculate the shaded area S. And then part B, for three marks, what's the total area? One thing you should notice straight away is there's parts above and parts below. And you need to remember the parts above will be positive and the integrals worked out below will be negative. But the areas you're looking for are the visible positive amounts of them. So one thing's for certain, don't try and integrate all the way from 0 to 2 or you'll get no marks. If that's all you do for the whole question, you'd get no marks. But it splits up maybe for that reason. So the first part, quite safely, what's area S? So I can start off by saying area S equals the integral. Now part B, I shouldn't really start off by saying area of this, call it something else, the area 2 equals the integral. Because it doesn't. Because that integral will be negative and the area is taken as a positive amount. You'd have to find some way of explaining, of wheedling your way out of that. But that's for part B. Part A is straightforward. This area goes from 0 to 1 of this part here. Well, but those are the y coordinates. That's like the heights of each of these little rectangles that make up this. So x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1 times the width of the little rectangles, length times breadth dx. And then you add them all up, going from 0 to 1. Remember, that's an elongated s for the summation. That's the first mark. Knowing to integrate, but setting it all out. Now, the next mark is for integrating, not differentiating. There's four marks for part A. If you then differentiate this expression, but properly put in the zeros and the ones and work it out, you'll still get no marks for the rest of it. You'll only get one out of four. Make sure you integrate, integrate, build up. The powers go up. So x to the power 3 goes up to x to the power 4. I'll put that down as a quarter. You may well write over 4. I don't like doing that. If it was something like x to the power 5 upon 2, if it went up to power 5 upon 2, instead of writing over 5 upon 2, which is quite clumsy, it's much neater instead of dividing by a fraction, just to multiply by the reciprocal, which is what I'm really doing here. Up to power 3. Divide by 3. Well, there's only one mark for this line, so there's no point in putting 6 over 3 just to tidy it up. That'll be a 2. Up to 2, divide by 2, and then back up to the linear term, back up to just x. Or you can think power 0 goes up to power 1. Now, you could put plus c, but there'd be no point because you're going to be evaluating it twice. So the plus c would just cancel out the other one. Now, that, strictly speaking, is the second mark, but I might as well finish it off. That's to be evaluated from 0 to 1. There's the second mark. The third mark is for putting in those values for the substitution. This is the sort of tedious part of it. So I've got a quarter of, and I'll just use brackets for the placeholder, 1 to the power 4, 2 times the 1 to the power 3, 2 times the 1 to the power 2, and I'll just use a bracket for that, minus. Now, what we do here, you could carry on the same way, bracket, and put all the zeros in. Or in this case, because it's just single x's, and not things like an x plus 1 to the power 4, which wouldn't go to 0 if x was 0. You could get away just by putting a zero in. In fact, that's what it's got in the marking scheme. But I think I'll just finish off the same way, even though it's, it, looks, it looks silly. A to the power 4 minus 2 times 0 to the power 3 plus 2 times 0 to the power 2 plus a zero. I know it all comes to zero. If you're feeling quite safe, just put minus zero. So then what does that come to? Well, obviously that part comes to zero. And this part, well, that's just minus 2 plus 2. We've got 1 and a quarter. Now, I wish I'd done that. Because I've got 1 and a quarter minus 0, which means quite safely area S is 1 and a quarter square units. Or maybe you've done them, did your calculation, as improper fractions, so that would be 5 upon 4 square units. The square units aren't in fact mentioned in the marking scheme. Just putting 5 upon 4 or 1 and a quarter will get you that final mark, of course. The third mark was for substituting the values in, but you could just have put minus 0 there. The reason I put unit squared in is just to emphasise it's unit squared because later on you might get a question where you've got a diagram like this and it represents some actual object that you've defined the area of and it tells you a scale that's involved. It might either say each unit squared is something like 5 square metres or maybe it'll just tell you the scale along each axis is something like 2 metres. 
So if the scale along the way of each unit was 2 metres, that means one square unit would be 4 square metres, in which case the final answer would be that multiplied by the appropriate scaling. That didn't apply here. Now part B, what's the total area? Well, firstly, don't write that it's the integral from 0 to 2 or you'll get no marks because the integral from this part is positive and the integral here is negative. As you add them up, your areas are going to build up and then they're going to start to subtract. So that overall you just have whatever's left over rather than the total amount. So don't do that. It's really just a case of how can I show what the area is when I know perfectly well the integral is going to end up with a negative amount. And I don't want to write equals negative something and then just equals and then mysteriously turn it into a positive. You'll need to have some sort of explanation. So you could say, call it area 2, is the negative of the integral from 1 to 2, calling that area 2. So that means you have to carry on that way, the negative of, the negative of, until you get to the answer. And then, of course, the answer will be the negative of a negative, which is a positive amount. Fair enough, that's what it should be. Or, better than that, you could say, if you want to start by saying area 2 equals, formally, the area, no matter whether this part is positive or negative, is the absolute value of whatever this says. The modulus sign, the absolute value of it. That's completely correct. Problem is you'd have to keep writing down the absolute value by putting down the modulus either side of it until you got to the answer and then finally write down the absolute value or the actual value of that. So if it was a positive, it'd be a positive, and if it was a negative, it'd be a positive value. A way around that is just to work out the integral first of all. Don't give it a name. Just work out the integral from 1 to 2 because you've anticipated the problem. So I'll just say, what's the integral of x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1 dx and that gets you there's only three marks for part b that'll get you the first mark now there's only two marks for the integral and then one mark for the total area so that when you write down your next line because all you're doing is copying this down again you're not going to get any extra marks for just copying this line from one to two that's not going to get any extra marks Similarly, the substitution's not going to get you any marks. It'll be the final answer to area 2, which I haven't named yet, which will get you the second mark. So the next line's going to be, now it just becomes quite tedious. So I'm working this all out at 2, so I'm just going to replace x by 2s in all of these. Minus. Now, this would be the same expression with 1s, which you've done already. You know that this comes to 1 and a quarter, or 5 up and 4. So, am I allowed just to put that down or not? Looking at the marking scheme, it's tediously going on and put these all in, so I'll just do that then. But I don't see why I can't just put down one and a quarter, because I know that this part comes to that. Two times one squared plus the one. And then working it out is quite easy. Well, I know that part comes to one and a quarter or five up and four, whichever you like. All well, depends whether these fractions have got the same denominators or not. And this is just all powers of 2. Look, you've got a 2, an 8, a 16, and then a 4. What's that? A 4, a minus 16, a plus 8, plus 2, 14, minus 2. So altogether, it comes to negative 3 and a quarter. Or, if you like, negative 13 upon 4. Now, that is worth the second mark in this part. Notice I've got the negative here because the answer to that integral is negative. Now the final marks for the total area, and that's where you have to show that you understand what happens with this negative integral. So, not opted for putting the negative of this or the modulus sign in, so I'll just put a wee statement here, I'll say, that means that area two is going to be the absolute value of negative three and a quarter, which is three and a quarter units squared. Or if you don't like doing that, you can just make a statement, the area is positive, so the area equals three and a quarter. Which means that the total area is going to be one and a quarter plus three and a quarter, which is four and a half square units. Or maybe you did it all as an improper fraction, so that would be nine upon two square units. 
And the third mark is for getting this final answer with some justification of what happened to this negative here. And that would involve some sort of statement that the area is the perceived positive amount, or you could use this absolute value.